all over the world, it's not just here in America. In America, things are kind of, we all strive for the American dream to rise through poverty. And in China, if you live in a low income area, most likely you will have the same track as your parents. It's a little bit tricky. Students have to have something called haku in order to attend a school within the city parameters of Beijing. And what the Dandelion School is, it's a school dedicated to migrant children on the outskirts of Beijing with some of these kids, unfortunately, you know, they're, not all of them are gonna even be able to go to, you know, to high school or college, and it really isn't their fault. One of my professors, Dr. Gu Chen, sort of shared with us her story during the Cultural Revolution by someone who lived through the Cultural Revolution and who experienced those types of hardships. When she went back to a school that had children that were struggling or children that were disadvantaged, you sort of saw her in another light. I was uh, consider myself a kind of privileged class uh, growing up with a daddy as a professor and mom a school principal until Cultural Revolution hit us. That the target of the Cultural Revolution was educators intellectuals and those with education background. During the Cultural Revolution, all schools from elementary to higher education were shut down. My parents were persecuted. They were paraded along the street and they were not allowed to come home. Our house was searched thoroughly. We had no right as a human being. It was a total darkness. The importance of education in China following the Cultural Revolution and into the modern day is so important. That's why I feel when I notice that the lack of education and uh, uh, understand that education for millions of migrant students, uh, it's injustice done to these students. And uh, I'm just very motivated and inspired to help in any small ways that I can do.